Sir Handel and Buster, written and told by Kiefer Adams. One morning, Percy arrived at the wharf with some building materials. Reneus and Scar Lowy were already there, and were surprised at the little green engine's visit. Hello, Percy, greeted Scar Lowy. It's been a long time since we've seen you round these parts. What brings you to the hills? asked Reneus. Miss Jenny Packard's machines are building a road near the railway, explained Percy. Ah, yes, we did hear about the road, said Scar Lowy. But the Finn controller didn't say which machines were coming. Well, Jack will be here, of course, said Percy. There's also Kelly, Isabella and Buster. Buster? said Reneus. He's a steamroller, right? That's right, replied Percy. Oh dear, said Scar Lowy. I know one engine who won't like that. Percy was surprised, but of course Scar Lowy was referring to Sir Handel. Sir Handel had just returned from the stone quarry. A lot had changed while he had been away and he was still adjusting to the railway. He arrived in a rather bitter mood at the transfer yards. James was just about to take Mr Percival to a meeting with the Fat Controller. Sir Handel, Mr Percival called. I'm expecting Miss Jenny Packard's machines to work on a new road over the next few days. I want you to be in charge of the construction. It would be an honour, sir, said Sir Handel grandly. Mr Percival smiled, and James took him away. Well, what's a construction company? asked Sir Handel to Thomas. Well, Miss Jenny owns a company of machines, replied Thomas. They do construction work around the island. The machines that are coming here will include Jack the front loader, Kelly the crane, Isabella the flatbed lorry, she's kind of like Elizabeth, and Buster the steamroller, a steamroller, thundered Sir Handel. A steamroller is coming to our hills. I won't allow it. And with that, Sir Handel stormed away. Thomas was surprised. But we all know, don't we, that Sir Handel had not forgotten his past brawl with George the steamroller, which had happened shortly before he had been sent to the stone quarry. But when Jack, Kelly, Buster and Isabella arrived, the other little engines warmed up to them. Even Scar Lowy was impressed. It's so nice to finally meet the machines of Miss Jenny's company, he said to Kelly and Isabella. We're always happy to help, said Isabella. Just you watch Scar Lowy, said Kelly. This road will do your wonders for your rails, I promise. I can already bet on it, said Scar Lowy. The little engines worked very hard with the Sodor Construction Company. Even Duncan was impressed with how well they worked. Usually he would complain about anything, but even the machines had won him over. Sir Handel, it was true, did not get along with the machines. The other little engines tried to convince him that they meant no harm, but Sir Handel just couldn't let go his past running with George and promised to give Buster a piece of his mind if he ever saw him. But it was only a couple of days later when Sir Handel finally got his chance. One morning at the crack of dawn, Sir Handel and Peter Sam brought trucks of gravel for the pack to continue their work on the road. Buster was in charge of flattening out the gravel while Jack unloaded it from his bucket. Sir Handel stared coldly at Buster as he trundled back and forth. Do you know George? he eventually asked. Uh, not really, no, began Buster. I don't know anyone. You liar, roared Sir Handel. You're probably one of his mates, threatening to tear up our rails and cause trouble for us. <laughs> Leave him alone, growled Jack. I'm sorry, said Sir Handel. I didn't ask for your input. Buster is one of the most hard-working machines the pack has to offer, said Jack. If you can't see that, then you shouldn't be here. 
Um, I think it's best that we go now, Sir Handel, said Peter Sam. We need to put in more gravel. Oh, we're going, snorted Sir Handel. He turned angrily to Buster. I am not finished with you, and he stormed off. I'm really sorry about Sir Handel, Peter Sam wailed, as he and the trucks were dragged away by the blue saddle tank. Buster was rather upset. Oh, don't listen to him, said Jack. He may have had a steamroller encounter once before, but you are a really useful asset to the pack. Don't you ever forget that. Jack went back to work, while Buster was lost in his thoughts. A few days later, the road was almost finished, and Mr Percival was to inspect the road for himself. There was just one more bit of road to do, and it crossed under a small stone bridge. When Buster arrived, he was very careful to go under the bridge to add the last bit of gravel and tarmac. He had just finished when he heard a cracking sound from above. Something's wrong with the bridge, Buster called. His banksman and the foreman looked up. By Jove, he's right, said the banksman. Look! A series of cracks had spread across the bridge. The foreman was just wondering what should be done when a whistle sounded up ahead. It was Sir Handel. He was making a delivery of vans to market. We've got to warn him, Buster cried. His banksman tried to climb up the embankment, but it was too steep. There was only one thing Buster could do. He blasted his whistle as loudly as he could. When Sir Handel came into view, he thought Buster was just showing off, until he heard the rumbling of the bridge up ahead. Brakes! he shouted. His crew stopped just in time. His driver and fireman carefully walked up to the bridge. When they saw the cracks, they could hardly believe their eyes. Had we crossed that, it would have collapsed, said the driver. Sir Handel looked down and saw Buster, who gave a small smile. Sir Handel was embarrassed and ashamed. At long last, the road was completed. Jack, Kelly and Isabella had already returned to Miss Jenny's yard. Buster was waiting at the wharf for Thomas to come and collect him. Some of the little engines came to see him off. Thank you for your help, said Peter Sam. You were all splendid. It's the least I can do, smiled Buster. And thank you for saving me the other day, said Sir Handel. I'm really sorry about my behaviour. I had a bad running with a steamroller before. But now I can see you are twice the steamroller George himself wishes to be. Thank you, smiled Buster. Before long, Thomas arrived to take Buster back to the yards. When he had gone, the little engines were left in their thoughts. Do you know something, Peter Sam? said Sir Handel. Yes. I'm beginning to understand about this railway more and more since I came back from the stone quarry. The railway has changed, and I am going to change with it. Peter Sam smiled broadly. That's good to hear, Sir Handel, he said, and it's good that you are home. Sir Handel gave the warmest smile he'd had in a long time. He'd made a new friend within the Sodor Construction Company, and from that day on, he promised to be a more useful and reliable engine in the hills of Sodor.